at us. Hey, look at us. Look at us. Huh? Who would have thought? Not me. This week's episode of Dark Matter is a messed up game of guess who that Jason is. One Jason, two Jason, three Jason, four. I will ride with one in a car and I will drink with one at a bar. I love this chaotic episode. We're going to be setting everything straight on who is who throughout this entire episode and give our theories on where episode nine will go. Sit back, relax, light up as we get into episode 8 of Dark Matter. So Jason Prime is back to his home universe, but quickly learns that he's in a damn Jason vs. Battle Royale with a handful of doppelgangers just strolling about in his home universe. However, his conversation over a couple beers with himself quickly reveals why this is happening, how this is happening, and what he's going to have to do. I'll sort out all of the Jasons in a little bit, but at the bar, Jason 10 reveals to Jason Prime that every single decision he made in the box created a new Jason, and so forth and so on. Every choice I made in there created a different Jason. Every choice those Jasons made, and those Jasons, and those Jasons. Meaning that theoretically and statistically more and more Jasons will find their way back to the main universe, thinking and claiming that they are Jason Prime with the same goal of reuniting with his family. But you could you could see the problem. There's there's only one Daniela and one Charlie, while there's God knows how many Jasons at this point, let alone next week's episode. My original theory last week when we saw the two different Jasons go into the gun store was that every single time Jason used Lavender Fairy, that that split off a new Jason, but it is much more compounded and chaotic than that. Now with dozens of Jasons running amok, truly it was difficult to know which one was which, who was doing what. Heck, I, I was getting a couple of them switched here or there, but like last week, I turned on audio descriptions, which designates a number to all of the Jasons in this episode, helping me, helping us, helping everyone keep things straight. So starting with the final scene from episode 7 last week, Jason Prime, Jason 1, the main Jason we're following was the first Jason to go into the gun store, buying a knife and pepper spray. Jason 6 is the one who goes into the store after him and out into the falling snow at the end of the episode. Switching over to episode 8, Jason 2 is the one in the house at the start of this episode, and when taking out the trash, has a scuffle with Jason 7, who is killed and then stored in the trunk of their Honda Civic. This explains why Charlie being pulled over at the college was so stressful, there was a damn body in the trunk. When Jason 1 leaves the Milshire Hotel, the same one he stayed at in multiple different universes, he meets Jason 8 in the hallway. Jason tries to talk to him, but he flees. Once Jason 1 is outside, Jason 9, wearing the wintry fleece sweater, starts to follow him, slowly closing in, until he loses him at the village tap. Inside of the village tap, Jason 1 sits down and has a beer with Jason 10. A couple of interesting things we learn about Jason 10, though, is that he had lost his Amanda along their travels in some sort of, quote, dark world. My assumption is that it's the universe with the creepy monster hidden in the fog is where Amanda unfortunately was probably lost. Anyway, Jason 10 also has a black hair tie around his ring finger, whereas Jason 1 used a rubber band, ending their conversation with Jason 10 alluding that he has a gun. I don't have a gun. You don't have a gun. So I'm curious how many characteristics will be shared amongst these Jasons, and how many are packing some serious heat. Continuing on, Jason 11 is the Freddy Krueger looking mofo who stalks Jason 2 at the college, and unfortunately is choked out. If we pause it though, we can see that Jason 11 shares the same black hair tie around his ring finger like Jason 10, and the same finger brace similar to Jason 6. The final two unknown Jasons are Jason 12, the one who swoops in and pulls a come with me if you want to live. However, he is yet another imposter crashing cars into Jason 13. Hopefully all of this makes sense, clear, make, you know, who is who throughout this, who did what, because yeah, the whole episode is a damn clown car full of Jasons on Jasons on Jasons. I did have a thought or, or a theory when writing this, so at the bar, Jason 10 admits that every choice created a new Jason. And at the point, they all seem to be versions of Jason 1 with uh, the goal of getting back home and reuniting with his family. 
But what about Jason 2? This guy claimed a handful of episodes ago that he had traveled or used the box well over a hundred times. Where are the dozens of Jason 2s? Are they still coming? Maybe some of the Jasons I listed here are in fact spawn of Jason 2. Let me know in the comments if this logic makes sense or if I'm thinking way too out of the box for what this series is feeding us. Jason 2 is a frantic mess once Jason 7 attacks him at the start of this episode. Jason 2 knows damn well everything is slowly crashing down on him, and that's why he's trying to get Daniela and Charlie out of the house at the end. Now thinking about it though, I wonder if he would have taken them back to the box. Anyway, Daniela has been hot on Jason 2's trail, talking with Ryan, who is not the Ryan she remembers. So already something's a little fishy. Danielle breaks into a Jason 2 storage unit, discovering more of his lies. Ryan's mechanic jumpsuit, dozens of phones with creepy pictures of them. Like me. Various types of money, one being a picture of Robert Kennedy. Uh, who I'm assuming in that universe lived, became president, all of that. Because side note, if you don't know about Robert Kennedy, specifically the day he was assassinated, read up on it. It is a fascinating conspiracy type stuff. Daniela receives a call from an unknown number, which turns out to be the police station where Jason 1 purposely landed himself because he lit up a cigar in the diner. Now, to be honest, this was a great idea, but I did think originally that this was a different Jason who just didn't know the laws of this universe, but nope, Jason 1 knew what he was doing, how to get Daniela alone, the pair to be safe because there are police everywhere, and for him to reveal what is actually happening. Daniela is clearly still hesitant about whether or not this Jason is playing her, as the two plan to meet at the Bean later that afternoon with the safe word of Jupiter. I was curious if this had any significance. Is it a reference to the god Jupiter, potentially the planet, or heck, maybe Daniela is a big fan of Train. Jupiter in her head. I did look this up to see if the novel had any insight and not a damn mention of Jupiter, meaning that this is solely for the TV series. I know that there's been research around the planet Jupiter having various dark matter, quote, hairs floating around its atmosphere in terms of gravitational interactions. So to be honest, that right there, that's my connection with Jupiter and dark matter. Please let me know in the comments if uh, there is actually better significance, any actual significance, because my brain, my brain be dead right now. The ending sees Jason 2 crippled at the bottom of the stairs, misery style, while Jason 1 reunites with his family, relaying the Jupiter safe word. However, Daniela's look says that she's not 100%, she's still weary of this Jason. Of course, with one episode left, there are a lot of theories and concerns of how the heck do they wrap this thing up? Because personally, right now, I, I see like three potential outcomes. There's a Jason vs. Battle Royale, where they all go at it, Jason 1 and Daniela and Charlie use the box to flee to a different universe, or Jason and all of the other Jasons get in the box and start their own Jason universe. I'm leaning towards the second option, but won't the Jasons just chase him and then they'll have even more created because they're getting in the box and this is just gonna be a never ending cycle? Let me know your thoughts on where you think things are going in next week's final episode. Before wrapping up though, I did have a couple of questions and observations. I really, I really thought the car accident at the end would be a result of Daniela's Honda Civic because Ryan mentions that she just burns through brake pads and then there was also that crash or that intersection that was alluded in like episodes one and two with Charlie either stopping or going through it. So I, I thought that was gonna pay off. And what the heck is with the name Kankakee and Charlie knowing about extra doses? You must have thought of Kankakee, right? I only know about that forest preserve because of Charlie. We only know about it because of Charlie. I am beyond baffled because Charlie doesn't know about the box, doses, other Jasons yet. So w what's with this? I know Kankakee is a little over 60 miles or an hour outside of Chicago. So maybe this is where they hide or have to go to get the more doses for the box. You know what, maybe, maybe this is where the storage unit is at. It felt odd, but also important. Maybe they purposely left stuff in, I, I don't know. 
Episode 8 of Dark Matters in the books. Easily one of the most WTF episodes of the series so far, and I gotta give mad props to Joel Edgerton for really making each of himself, each version, feel like a slightly different person. We have one episode left next week, so let me know all of your thoughts, feelings, concerns, theories, everything in the comments, because another thing, there's no chance we're figuring out what happened to the main Ryan, Amanda, the multiple Laytons, or even Detective Mason, right? I appreciate everyone watching these breakdowns. Help support the channel by liking, subscribing, and following all of my other social media accounts. Really, everything has been great, so thank you so much for helping with this, and to, to gain traction, that is. So, peace out, and I'll see you next week in the finale breakdown.